Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to go over some portrait editing using some AI plugins from a company called Retouch for Me. Now, full disclosure, I was provided these plugins in order to showcase them here on the channel, and I am affiliated with the company, but I do use these programs in my portraits and I think that they're phenomenal and that's kind of what I want to showcase today. I'm not going to go over every single step of how these tools work, but if that's something you're interested in, then please let me know in the comment section below. But here's what I will tell you. These tools work really well alongside on one photo raw. If you want to go another level above what on one provides for portrait retouching, let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, for the sake of time, because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time inside of On One, I just kind of want to show you how I use it. Essentially, I start with a raw file inside of On One Photo Raw, and I'll do some Bruins AI or make some tonal corrections, things of that sort. If I minimize some of this stuff over here, you'll notice I just use Bruins AI here. You could do whatever you want to. And I mean, you could use portrait AI, but I wouldn't recommend doing that if you're going to use retouch for me software alongside on one instead, just use on one as the raw processor and then send your images out to retouch for me. Now, what I've done is I created an image where I have on one edits and then the top version here, I just turned off portrait AI. So the one that's labeled on one edits, this is with portrait AI turned on. And I'm just going to zoom into her face because I think that's where you'll see the visible difference. And then if I turn it off, then you can see we still have blemishes on the face and I could go in and retweak portrait AI, but I want to show you the power of retouch for me. So let me go ahead and just close out of this file here. And you'll notice I have three of the same image right here. This is the original in the middle, the on photo file. That's the one that we just had open. But what I'm going to do is send a TIFF file into the ARAMS software that we were just looking at. In order to do that, what you would do after you complete your raw edit, Yours may not be an on photo file. It would just be the raw file. You would right click on it. And then you would come down to the bottom and you would say send to other application. No different than what you would do with any other photo editing application that you want to send images to from on one. For me, I'm going to use send to retouch for me a Rams. You'll see that I have Apex installed. This is the cloud version of the software. I'll cover that in a separate video, but for today, we're just going to look at ARAMS. Now, since I already created a TIFF file, I'm actually going to work with this file over here by right clicking on it. And I'm going to come down to send to retouch for me ARAMS. All right. And the difference between the two I'll talk about between ARAMS and Apex, but I'm going to click on edit original for this pop up because the TIFF file that I have here is the brilliance AI applied without portrait AI. All right. So I don't need to edit a copy with the settings since the settings are already saved to this TIFF file. So I'm just going to edit the original. That way, when we come back into on one, all of my edits are going to be on this file already instead of creating multiple copies of the same file. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to click edit and on one is going to send this straight in to the ARAMS software. All right. So let's go ahead and start editing this file. So over on the right side, we have access to a correction tab, which is going to give us access to presets, the pre render view, as well as all of our individual plugins that we have again, installed locally to our computer. And then we have details and details is not a tab that we're going to be using today. So I'm not actually going to go over that. So if I click on correction, the first thing that I want to do is turn on the use pre render preview. 
What this is going to do is whenever I apply these tools down here, it's going to actually show me over here on the photo. So the first thing that I'll probably do or that anyone would probably want to do is heal the skin. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the button that says heal here, and you'll notice that it cleans up the skin. Now, it did get rid of the mole that was on her skin down here, but I'll show you how to bring that back in on one a little bit later. All right, now the next step is going to be dodging and burning. So if I check this block, you'll notice that nothing happened. And the reason for that is because I need to re-click the pre-render button. So we'll click that and we'll notice after a while that dodging and burning is going to actually show up on the image. And so now if I pull this up and back and forth, you can see what's happening in her forehead area here for sure, where it's getting lighter or darker. Now, you have to be careful with this type of edit because you could go a little overboard. And I think that around 100% is probably appropriate for cleaning up the face and giving a really nice polished look for the dodge and burn. So we're going to skip over skin tone and we will come down to the eyes. So we want to start with eye brilliance, I think. So I'm going to check the block here and hit pre-render just so that way retouch for me starts to gather the edit for the eye retouching. Okay. And now we'll hit the drop down here and we'll just grab this slider and pull it over until it gets to about where it probably should be. Now for this particular image, I don't think I need the eye vessels and I'm not quite sure if the eye brilliance is really helping. It's also getting something over here in our hair. So the mask itself is not the greatest, but that's okay because we can clean that up in on one photo raw. So that's essentially everything that I would do inside a retouch for me. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the before. This is what we came into the retouch for me ARAMs with, and this is what we're going to leave with. So before and after. Now to get this out, I'm just going to come down to the bottom and click export. Before I do, if I want it to keep these exact settings, so if I want to batch process later, I could create a preset, especially if I know that I'm going to always use heal, dodge and burn, and then eye brilliance. But for today, I'm not going to create that preset. I'm just going to go ahead and click export. All right. So after you hit export, you get this dialog box and it's going to ask you, well, how many images do you have selected? Well, I only need the one image that's selected. You could do an entire group, but again, we're not going to go into that today. We're just going to focus on the one image. Then you have export location. This is pretty straightforward. I'm going to send it to the original files folder, but if you want to go to a completely different folder, then you can do select it and navigate to a different folder. Then it's going to ask you if you want to put it in a subfolder. I'm not overly concerned about that. I can also add it to the current ARAMS project if I'm working with a series of images, but I don't need to do that here today. And this is going to be the corrected version of the image, by the way, the one that all of these plugins are being applied to. And then I'm going to minimize that because I'm not overly concerned about that. Now, image sizing, I'm not going to turn this on to resize it. So that's just going to spit it out at its original resolution. Now, file settings, I think, is something worth discussing because if you click here, you can see that you can change this from a JPEG over to a TIFF. Now, I'm working on a TIFF file. You can see that up here in the text of the image. So I'm going to leave this as a TIFF because I want to continue having that uh, robust capability, if you will. So I'm going to click export after I've selected all of those things. And retouch for me is going to start processing that image. And, you know, I get this little countdown timer as well as over here on the right side. It tells me the progress of the edit. 
And then I get this nice little green indicator telling me that it's done. You could miss that if you aren't paying attention, but that's okay. Now I'm going to minimize this. And that brings us back into on one photo raw. Now you're probably wondering like, well, Chris, where is that edited version of the TIFF? Because I don't see it in here. And that's because I'm on an album. So if you do work in albums, just know that I need to go back to my signature edit folder because that's where I got this image from. And then I just need to scroll through here until I find the original file. Here are the original files, the three that we had earlier. And then this is the retouched one because it says retouched. So I'm just going to go ahead and click, drag, drop that into the retouch for me demo album. So that way I have it here and make things a little bit easier for us overall. Now I'm going to double click on the on one photo raw file or on one photo file. And this is our image before we send it into retouch for me. Now, this is where layers comes in handy, especially when you want to retouch, because I could go and run off with that completed TIFF file and use that as a deliverable. But remember, we wanted to bring back some of the, uh, the skin details. So what I can do is hit the plus icon under layers. And if your layers is hidden, and just minimize all of this stuff. If your layers is hidden, you just got to click on the word layers and it's going to expand this folder. And then you can hit the plus icon. This is going to bring you to the folder where your original file is located. And because we save that TIFF file over here, it's going to also be in this folder. So I'm just going to scroll down until we get there. It was at the bottom of the list here earlier. So here we go. And you'll just look through here. I know that this is the retouched version. I'm going to click that and then add it as a layer. Now this is going to come in above all of my other images and that's perfectly fine because now what I can do is I can apply a layer mask to the edited version and I can just erase right here or let's go ahead and lower the opacity so I could see where I need to paint. There it is. And we'll zoom in a bit here so it's easier to see on the video, but I can see that this is the area that I need to remove from my top layer. So I'm using on the layers and this is important. All right. Because I know that the new masking inside of photo raw 2026 has mask layers, which could be confusing. I'm just going to minimize that. So that way we're only looking at the layer section. And this is more like a Photoshop workflow. I can click on the layer icon here and it will expand my masking tools, but just ignore those. And we're going to focus right here on this mask. As I paint this away, you'll notice that that skin mole starts to return. And so now if I zoom out, we'll just hit command and zero, you can see I've retouched the face and preserved everything that I want it to on the face, but I also brought back that skin mole that may or may not be something that you want to keep. Now, another thing that we can do, I'll just hit the plus icon, zoom in again. Remember earlier, I noticed that the eye brilliance was actually adding some stuff over here. Well, I can also paint that away. So, I'm not getting that effect in that area either. And so now if I turn this effect off and on, you can see what's happening to her skin. And I'll just rename this retouched. So that way it makes sense. And I did not spell retouch properly, but that's not as important. So that's how I use the retouch for me tools inside of my on one photo raw workflow. 
Now, I could go a lot further into the editing process, but I don't think that that is necessary for today's video. Now, of course, if you got questions about the Retouch For Me software, please leave them in the comment section below, especially of how do I integrate it into my own workflow? If you are a portrait photographer, I think you'll see the value of having tools like this at your disposal. But if you got questions, then I'm more than happy to answer how we can apply them into our workflows while using on one photo raw. Now, again, if you want to save money when you pick up these retouch for me plugins, they're having a sale from November 25th until December 5th, 2025. Using the coupon code FREE20 will save you some money. And I also make a small commission from everyone who uses it, but it's at no extra cost to you. It's a great win-win for everyone involved. If you want to learn how to apply this into your own workflow, consider signing up for a training call with me. A link for that is in the description box below, and I'll walk you through applying these tools to your workflow. If you're using on one photo raw, if you're using Lightroom, it doesn't matter. Whatever workflow that you have, I will help you learn to integrate these tools so you can get the best photos that you possibly can. With that, until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.